HQ Post Game is presented by Turo. Find your drive. It's Joe Musso alongside Bryant McFadden and Ryan Wilson. A gentleman, interesting ball game between these two teams out west. A lot to unpack here, both short term and long term. But let's start with the here and now in this game, BMAC. What really stood out to you in the way that San Francisco managed this game because yeah. they were playing from behind in the first half there, but it never really seemed in doubt. Yeah, I, I love the adjustments that we saw from the 49ers after halftime. Didn't allow one point in the second half, so we saw some big-time adjustments from the defensive side. And then offensively, Jimmy Garoppolo started to kind of get into the rhythm. We saw Elijah Mitchell become more of the vocal point in the ground and pound game in the second half, so I like the depth that they have at the running back position. So this team, you don't question the talent. It's all about the execution. I think we're still, still trying to figure things out. They're still trying to figure things out with CMC, trying to get him acclimated to this new offensive game plan that he in, but when they get everything rolling on all cylinders, you mm -hmm. better understand and know this offense can be deadly. No, that's right. In the first half, they were plagued by a brain hook fumble and a, a partially blocked punt. In the second half, no mistakes, and they leaned on the running game. And that's been Jimmy Garoppolo's best friend throughout his career, especially since arriving in San Francisco. And as you mentioned, uh, B Mac, Elijah Mitchell came back, and he looked like he didn't miss a beat. C-Mac didn't do a whole bunch. He had 38 yards on the ground. He had 39 yards receiving on four catches. And, look, I don't want to be that dude, but I do wonder, could you just kept Jeff Wilson, who had a big day today in Miami, and been better off with the draft picks? I know how versatile Christian McCaffrey <laughs> can be, and, and as you know, B-Mac, mm. he'll grow into this role, and Kyle Shanahan is the guy you want dialing up plays. I get all that. Uh, but, you know, i got to ask these questions because I'm the draft guy as well. Speaking of draft guys, by the way, Tilua Hufanga, uh, Hufanga? Fifth round pick. That mm. dude has been balling out since he arrived in San Francisco, and it just goes to show it ain't. It doesn't matter where you drafted. It's matter what you what you do when you get to the NFL. And he's proven that he's been much more valuable than that day three pick when they got him a few years ago. Yeah, a couple game ceiling picks already this season by Hufunga. That is uh, straight from our guy, the NFL draft expert Ryan Wilson, who always values picks over people. But let's talk about some of the people. There's lots of them. You alluded to it, B Mac. This offense can be so multiple in Kyle Shanahan's vision, but he is playing with some new toys. You're dealing with Mitchell. Uh, you're yeah. dealing with CMC. You got Ayuk. Uh, you, you got Debo, let's not forget about. You got George Kittle, a guy who really needs to touch the ball a certain number of times per game. What does this offense look like in your mind's eye when you're really projecting it at its final form? Well, I think they will be more devoted to running the football because of Christian McCaffrey. But then when you look at some of the pass catchers you've mentioned, I don't know if there's enough footballs to go around. Because when you bring in a guy like Christian McCaffrey, you take opportunities away from Debo Samuel. Yes, Debo Samuel is a wide receiver, but the way they utilize him, especially going back to last year, he was kind of their Christian McCaffrey for their offense a year ago. And then you factor in George Kittle. Don't forget, George Kittle can still ball. He's still considered one of the best tight ends in the game, but he's not getting the opportunities because of some of the other guys they have in the offense. But it's up to Kyle Shanahan. Mm -hmm. This is what he asks for, and I'm right there with you, Ryan. If you talk about giving so much to get Christian McCaffrey, if you just waited a week or so for Elijah Mitchell to return and you keep Jeff Wilson, maybe this offense is still looking the same. Mm -hmm. But they have to figure it out because this is what they wanted. They have Christian McCaffrey, who's one of the best offensive weapons in the National Football League. It's just going to take time. So I think by the month of December, we will actually have a nice – idea on what this team can look like on the offensive end because by that time Christian McCaffrey should, well, should be well suited with this game plan. No that's right B Mac and I don't want to say you can count the chickens before they're hatched uh, in terms of being in the playoff picture in the NFC but we talked about it earlier this evening. Uh, there ain't a bunch of teams pushing the 49ers for that final playoff spot or even the playoff spots five six and seven so if you need that time to figure out how to best utilize all these weapons you have at your disposal if you're Kyle Shanahan that's actually a pretty good problem to have look George Kittle only got one catch Debo only got two catches and look winning's great but at some point these guys might want the ball as well and as BMAC noted there's only one football typically used in a, in a game so <laughs> I, I think the the message is look we're going to get everyone on the same page let us figure all this stuff out. And in the meantime, let's just keep winning football games and make our way to the playoffs. Could they win the division? Maybe. We'll see how Seattle responds once they get back uh, in North America. Uh, but I think either way, the 49ers are almost certainly going to be a playoff team. It's just a matter of getting – 
their ducks in a row to keep the bird analogy going here uh, ahead of the playoffs. Yeah, it's very interesting, too, when you look at it relative to the offenses that they've rolled out there in the past. It's mm -hmm. never been a feature back. It's always running back by committee. I know. You think of the Coleman's, the Mostert's, uh, Mitchell. You think of all these guys that run through that offense and them riding the hot hand. Maybe mm -hmm. CMC does force them to feature somebody. We do have to talk about the L.A. side of this conversation as well because this is the moment that the naysayers are looking for. And, Ryan, I'll go to you first on this one. Uh, the guy right behind me, he's got all of the skills. He's got every expectation out in front of him. And he had an opportunity here, prime time, on the road, two-minute drill. And, again, not really getting the job done. Yes, you're backed up against your own one, uh, really playing in an adverse situation. But what are you seeing right now out of Herbert? Maybe more specifically, what are you not seeing that you want to? I tell you what, I'm not seeing uh, healthy playmakers. They had they were down their yep. top four receivers. Gerald Everett, their tight end, wasn't able to play because of a groin injury. So they were leaning on Trey McKinney, who hasn't played a ton of football. Uh, DeAndre Carter, who's been a special teamer uh, for the most of his career. Austin Eckler, who's fantastic, but he shouldn't be a number one receiver in the NFL. That's a lot to ask of Justin Herbert. And oh, by the way, hey officials, how about not you mess up the the touchback that you didn't call there at the end of the football game, mm -hmm. giving the ball to 20 instead of the one. But here's the thing. Excuses are for losers, and guess what? The Chargers <laughs> lost this game. I give them a ton of credit for playing as hard as they did, being as down many, as many players as they were. But at the end of the day, this ain't JV where you have a moral victory. you got to win football games. I give them a ton of credit for being 5-3 and three coming into this game. They're 5-4 and four as we sit here. They have to play on a relatively short week, so they got to figure some things out and get some guys healthy. Uh, but not a great showing from Justin Herbert. But I don't know if you put any quarterback in that situation, past or present, and they would have anything close to better success than, than what Herbert was able to manage. All right, let's zoom out to 30,000 feet here, guys, because I think – it's safe to say that these are two teams that do have playoff promise. Now, will mm -hmm. both of them be in the playoffs? We shall see how it shakes out. Let's take a look now at that playoff picture in the AFC and maybe offer some broad strokes here as we do have two seven-win teams in the Chiefs and the Dolphins who look cemented in that moment. The Titans, I don't know if you can call it a hollow 6-3, and three, but it sure feels like it. Ravens maybe finding their identity and moving forward. BMAC, as you take a look at this picture right now and then those teams in the hunt, how different do you expect it to be come December, January than what we're looking at right now? I think we will potentially see some movement at the number two spot. I think Buffalo still has a shot, especially with them getting healthier. Uh, Dolphins clearly will be in the playoffs, in my opinion. Uh, when you look at the Tennessee Titans, I don't see any movement when it comes to the AFC South. They are the best team. Mm -hmm. Getting Ryan Tannehill back in the fold, I think, would be huge. One team, I think, that's currently not in this playoff picture that might have a spot in the tournament, the Cincinnati Bengals. I think we could see some movement between Cincinnati and the Chargers. Okay. I'm not quite sold on the Chargers. I don't know when they're going to get their wide receivers back. That's one thing. And defensively, they sometimes play soft at the point of attack, especially in the trenches. I like what I'm seeing for Cincinnati, even without Jamar Chase for a few weeks. Defensively, they're rolling. Now they're starting to give the football to Joe Mixon as well. That will make things easier for Joe Burrow at the quarterback position. So I think Cincinnati, when it's all said and done, will find a way to get in that top seven. I don't think you're the only one with a raised eyebrow when it comes to the Chargers. Do you have anyone uh, marked as fraudulent or anyone really that you like in the second half of the season here, Ryan, to make that push in the AFC? No, the Chargers have real issues, and mm -hmm. the injury issues on both sides of the football, and we didn't talk about it, but b -Mac just brought it up. The defense had no chance in the second half because they were winded, uh, exhausted, and were down a lot of people. So, absolutely, they're, they're going to be a, a team to watch. Here's the thing. I, I'm concerned, extremely concerned about the Bills, and not because of the way Josh Allen played today, which was troubling, but if that elbow injury is a lingering issue and it's one of those things where he tried to play through it and what we're going to find out in a few weeks that maybe he needs to rest or, God forbid, something worse than that, that's it. That's a wrap because we saw when Josh Allen isn't at 100%, uh, the Bills can win football games, but they have to be on point at other phases, and they weren't on Sunday at home against the Vikings. So I'm going to be really cautious uh, about pushing this, Bulls uh, this Bills team excuse me, as a top team in the AFC until I find out more about Josh Allen's injury. Uh, because at times during that game, he tried to, to break up a tackle after an interception, and he hurt his, it looked to hurt his shoulder uh, and his elbow again, and I don't know what he's going to look like going forward. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Hopefully he's healthy. Uh, but that's a huge concern in, in Buffalo, not only – in terms of the coming weeks, but in terms of their playoff chances and, and making that Super Bowl run. Yeah, and I think telling the fact that 
they were willing to roll out Josh Allen in a not 100% situation here against the team and not go with their backup quarterback. Allen's 10 interceptions do lead the NFL right now. Mm. Uh, we're going to pivot now to the NFC side of the conversation where uh, the Dirty Birds are going to give it a go on Monday night and try and stay perfect. And Here's a look as they do pace the pack at 8-0. The Vikings with the biggest win of the week. No questions asked going into Buffalo and winning that ball game. A clutching victory from the jaws of defeat here, BMAC. When you take a look at the NFC, maybe a little bit more movement is offered here. You got a Giants team at 7-2 that's yeah. in that wild card race and Maybe they're playing a little bit out over their skis right now. What jumps off the board at you in the NFC? Well, clearly the top two teams, the best team, the best teams in the NFC. I think we could see some movement with the third and seventh spot. Okay. I think the, the Giants, I'm sorry, Holy the agree. 49ers. Mm -hmm. When it's all said and done, guys, I think they will win their division. But I do believe the Seahawks will have an opportunity to be in the tournament. Uh, I think all seven teams right now, as we see it, yeah. we'll get in. I don't trust the Commanders, the Falcons, the Packers, even though big time win for them, feel good story. The Lions, the Rams don't have a shot in my opinion. Yeah, I'm not sure how much movement there will be in the NFC, but it's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch it all come to pass, and we'll do it right here with these two gentlemen. Thank you as always. And don't forget, if football is your business, let's get to work. Can't miss conversations week in and week out on all things covered. Bryant McFadden, Patrick Peterson sitting down with some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment for can't miss conversations. And I'm sure they got something to say about Sunday's two picks by P2. It's all things covered. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.